time rut for elk and we're in Utah at the moment and uh, basically if you're a bow hunter and you've ever wanted to chase elk we are in the best place you could ever be in the world almost and um, we're just hiking in this morning and there's elk bugling all over the place it, I mean they're going nuts so um, the bulls are running they're fighting like crazy they're trying to breed hot cows they're pushing the cows around all day so this is like peak action so we're gonna try to find an old mature bull and hopefully put a good arrow in him and I have some meat for the next year uh, this is exciting stuff like there's few things on earth that get me this fired up it's like giant surf and hearing big bull elk bugle in the woods so I'm a happy guy right now <laughs> So we just got up on two bulls that were fighting in this thick stuff over here. And um, we got to get in to about 25 yards because our wind was good. And they were so distracted fighting each other. And the one that was closest to us, that was uphill. We're looking at him, looking at him. And the thing is, is Scott, our guide, he has to determine the age of the bull. Because here we're only allowed to shoot bulls that are eight years old or older. And the idea behind that is that you want to take those mature bulls instead of the younger ones that still have plenty of years to breed. So these mature bulls, they may or may not survive another winter. Um, their best breeding years are behind them. And uh, so it's like a, a very well-managed area. And that's why there's so many elk over here. But it was just insane being 25 yards from those two bulls. And they had no idea we were right there. And just watching them fight, the one was just thrashing a tree in between fighting and had all these broken branches just hanging off his antlers it was insane but they're just a little too young so it's about 10 a.m right now um, the, the bulls are kind of rounding up their cows and are probably gonna stay in the timber in one spot for a little while so we don't want to blow them out we'll probably take it easy but you can still hear them back there like it's crazy there's bulls right there i mean you can hike for a week and maybe not even hear that in a lot of places. So this is amazing. We're gonna go like another, there's only like probably one more canyon and that'll be the one we wanna go up. Yeah. And then we'll kinda hunt it up and we'll try to, you kinda gotta, you kinda gotta, I like to, if we do bump them, I like them to end up going up canyon because this yeah. is always loaded down here. But I like to keep it full at the top. Yeah. You know, if you if you get if you get 
a pile of elk in there at the top, it just gets insane.
lot of people don't know about me is that I'm actually quite the artist. So when we have these downtimes, you know, you never really have downtime in the mountains. So I, I like to create art. This is a piece I call Feather. I've been working on it for about 35, 45 seconds. I put this one in the pack and bring it home. What was your inspiration? <laughs> My inspiration was... I saw this beautiful eagle flying overhead right before our scent blew out a bull and um, completely blew the stalk. So I was like, I have to make a feather. Yesterday we did a bit of hiking, got close to some pretty amazing bulls, passed on some. Um, then in the evening we sat on a wallow and uh, had some great bulls come in again. Again, I passed on some that I could have shot, which I may or may not regret later. And then uh, two amazing bulls came in, like just on the end of shooting light, and I just didn't. One, I could have still probably taken the shot, but I just didn't feel super comfortable with it. Last thing you want to do is just wound an animal and not find it. And then uh, a real good one came right after the end of shooting light. So we had great action. I can already hear bulls bugling in the distance this morning. Beautiful sunrise. So we're going to go do some walking and see if we can run into a monster.
so there's bulls everywhere. You're just trying to find the biggest, oldest bull. And so, uh, yeah, we had a bunch of close encounters and heard this bull that just sounded bigger than all the rest. And we finally got eyes on him down here and he had a bunch of cows and he's in this meadow in the bottom and he's like, I would definitely, definitely take the shot on that bull. But he just didn't come close to the tree line where we were. He kind of went the opposite side of the meadow and the cows took off. They weren't scared or anything, but he just went off after him, make sure no other bulls get to him. So we're just kind of waiting and hoping to figure out where he went.
are you feeling, bud? I don't know. It's an amazing animal. This is by far best elk I've ever been on. It's crazy. They're beautiful. How stoked are you? <laughs> I can't even. That's what, how I wanted to kill it too, man. I'm so stoked. Oh, yes! Dude, that's... <laughs> that's a great ball, dude. I mean, he they put, were full on, like just lining up to wreck each other. Just like, yeah. oh my god, the two biggest bulls are gonna fight at 40 yards from us. <laughs> and they just walked right to us. <laughs> oh, that is so much meat, I'm gonna have to get back to Boy. Yeah, this thing's gonna be a bitch, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to buy another chest freezer. Broadhead's back. Lives to fight another day. It's amazing that that little thing can get you a year and a half worth of meat. Well, I mean, we've been hunting for four days now. We'd only have like one more full day left. And just thinking about how many bulls that I passed on. Because I came here just really wanting to take a, a old bull that has really good genetics, you know, and, and the antlers are essentially a sign of genetics. And just be really targeted and picky. And to me, that's why a bow hunt is because it's so much more difficult. You have to get close, you have to learn the animals better. And part of that process of being really targeted and, and taking out an animal that's passes probably its prime breeding years. And, um, and passing on a lot of animals, it, it just feels that much better when you do get that animal and know that you really challenge yourself. And at the end of the day, I got about 200 pounds of meat that me, my family, and friends are gonna be eating in Hawaii for probably the next year at least. Um, but today coming in, you know, it's like, we got, we got, two friends here filming and shooting photos and you know it's like kind of spooky it's it's hard enough to move around a bunch of animals and be quiet and uh try to not get winded by them or and all those different factors that play into bow hunting them and uh it it came together on a really big beautiful bull that i definitely would have taken and we were 26 yards from this bull and it was bedded and we were just waiting for him to stand up and he finally got our wind and as soon as he stood up he just faced his rear to me and I could have maybe tried to take a shot but it was very narrow margin shot you know like if he turned a little I would have got a bad shot and just wounded that animal and never found him and he just would have went and suffered for a long time so um, he ended up peeling out and uh, that was a little disheartening and then uh, we just worked in and bulls were just screaming and fighting like this whole valley was just sounded like a, a riot of dinosaurs like full Jurassic Park and we're trying to get into where all the action is but you have these satellite bulls that are getting pushed outside of the action because they're getting beat up by the big bulls or just scared off because the bulls are protecting the cows and uh, we we had to bump a couple of bulls out of the way and sure enough we come up and there's elk looking at us on the hill 
and then we spot a really good bull far away and uh, we were trying to call to him he wasn't responding wasn't responding and then we're like oh he's he's peeling out he's taking off going uphill with the rest of the cows and then he started circling back we're like oh my god we might get a chance at him and then another giant bull pops up and they're moving in and they're kind of running almost parallel with each other and they stop at 46 yards and start squaring off and fighting and it's like mind-blowing that this is all happening right in front of us and I was standing there and just I was waiting in between them clashing antlers and he stopped and I just I had to go off of my 50 yard pin I didn't have time to adjust my pin and I let one go and you could tell immediately that it was a good shot and uh, so he stumbled and he went away and the other bull probably thought he just intimidated him and ran him off and he took about 20 steps and stopped again and I knocked another arrow and put another one in him even though I knew, knew it was a good shot you want your animals to you know die as quickly as possible you don't want them suffering too long and uh, yeah hit him again and knew he was going down but he moved a little ways and hit him again and he stopped and I actually hit him a fourth time just to make sure and he just tipped right over he didn't go far he, he maybe was alive for I don't know two minutes after the initial arrow so it went as perfectly as it could have the first shot when we got the heart out of him to um, eat later you can tell the arrow went directly through the center of the heart so that's like absolutely optimal best situation ever and I couldn't be happier with the outcome when I let go of that first arrow I could tell by the, the noise and wh when I let go of it I was like that's a good shot but you know what I don't get excited I almost get even more nervous after the first arrow because you never know these animals are so strong and durable like they can just keep going so I I still have in my mind that maybe I did make a mistake and maybe I didn't hit something that good so I'm just really trying to put a second arrow in it watching where it's gonna go in case we have to track them for a while and um, I think it was by the second arrow he was already fading out and stumbling and it was just like I couldn't believe that it happened <laughs> after all those days and, and passing on a lot of good bulls and so many close encounters and this is the best bull that I had a shot at the entire time and everything just worked out it, it doesn't always happen that way so I'm ecstatic right now but it's a weird thing with hunting it's like it's a mix of emotions that I've never felt at the same time any other way because it's like it's a beautiful animal I have a ton of respect for it and um, you killed it but um, just knowing that he died quickly he's had a lot of good years to pass on his genetics and breed and uh, yeah it's it's happiness I'm mostly glad that I, I killed the animal efficiently and we gotta go